Right, I think it's time to start up the old War Thunder. I haven't done that in a while. Get ready for a new splash screen. Uh, apparently you can edit the screen, so I just did that. Ah, doesn't that look nice? Anyway, hopefully it loads us into game. What are we going to do today? I have no idea. Okay, Super Mystia B2. You know what? Let's drive, or should I say fly this machine. Most underrated one at that. Go over some details before we tack out a flight. Alright, let's get stuck into it. Righty, come here A4. Come on, attack, 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 critical hit, aircraft destroyed. Ah! Oh, you absolute idiot, Ash. Come on, really? Ugh. Next match. Okay. Out of fuel, no fuel. We're going to become a rally car plane thing. Yeah, they don't call it the Super Mysteer for nothing. Pull out the turbo, do 50Ks down a gravel road. I need to cut that uh, parachute. Oh, shit. How did I not explode? What? Every time you hit a tree in this game, you explode. Oh, this is gosh and magic, I swear. You know what's remarkable about this vehicle? It's incredibly well-rounded for an aircraft that is rank 6, but already 9.0. Essentially, you know, this costs 590,000 to purchase, with 222,000 uh, to research. And I believe this was up you know, put in the game upon update 1.87 locked on. And Desalt made a wide variety of aircraft, and considering the new patch is coming on us soon, it's a shame that we're not getting more French aircraft. But hey, we're getting a F-8E ex ex you know, export, even if it's just a copy-paste with some French roundels on it. Grinding the French tech tree was utterly a pain back then. You didn't have the Sabre Dog, and the F-100 wasn't even in the tech tree at that time. You had the Super Mysteries, and you had these Arogans. Even the Vatuas didn't necessarily help, and mind you, people were flying the pre premium one like no tomorrow. I'm recently revisiting the tech tree, someone requested this on my Twitch stream the other day, and I've fallen in love with this machine. I'm not very good at it, but for what it is, two 20 mm Davis, max speed of 1,159 kilometers hour, crew of one, and let's just take a brief look at the armor, got front bulletproof glass, glass 40 mil, and some 14 mil steel, as well as 14 behind the pilot, and another 14 mil plate just behind. Now modifications wise, it doesn't get really anything particularly interesting. I haven't really unlocked everything in this yet, and I'm still going through it as it's kind of just stock. Started playing it the other day, but I did get the air target spelt, which is necessary, and you can get uh, your snebs, and you can also get your nords, so that should be fun once I unlock them. For air to air targets, you get aim 9Bs, and considering we're not using this in a ground pounding way, because, well, why would I use a super mystery for that? Uh, the real only interesting thing about this machine is it gets this gorgeous Tiger camouflage. Let me give you a nice close-up of what this looks like. And, uh, goodness me, it is quite one of the funky ones. So, enjoy as I spade this aircraft, because, you know, we're going to be talking about this machine and its history. Right, welcome to one of the matches. This was recorded on the live stream, uh, and it's a pretty fun machine, I must say. It's probably about after my eighth or so game. I got average amount of kills, so I had an average amount of deaths. Nothing too spectacular, but I just feel like this machine is incredibly well-rounded, you know? It was designed and developed by the Soul Aviation, and was supposed to be a multi-role fighter bomber, which could you know, later change the outcome of the F-105, and also the Phantom but it really couldn't be put into one type of combat. So multi-role function was created with just one type of aircraft as well. France really didn't have the funds to really rebuild and, and have multiple types of aviation. Because, well, they're still rebuilding after the Second World War, something which they didn't recover from until about the early 70s, but still. Uh, the Super Mysteria is basically a fascinating story where it you know takes all other four predecessors before it uh the Desalt and rogan uh, the mystere 2 mystere 3 and the mystere 4 series of fighters uh which could not go supersonic and this one basically puts an afterburner on it and they take the lessons learned from that and with an afterburner this aircraft opens up all sorts of opportunities it's quick to accelerate it is definitely a lot more fuel hungry you need to pack at least 20 minutes depending on the match length I have gotten away with 8 minutes occasionally, but you do run out of fuel quite a lot. Being a multi-role fighter is a bit hard to really put into perspective here. 
this aircraft in War Thunder feels a bit average. It's just an average fighter. Which makes it, you know, a really good uh, experience for newer pilots to supersonic jets that they can also then quickly fly this machine and master the aircraft. Especially with a playstyle that they might be familiar with in props. But having said that, you will have to go through all the previous Rogans and Mysteers in order to get to this machine. So whether the trade-off is worth it, I don't know. You know you've got a afterburner and, you know, you've got two day for cannons. It does get up tiered and frequently you will see SU-7s and Harrys and Yak-28s and things that you won't be able to catch and even MiG-21s. But in hindsight, right, it, no, though not the fastest fighter, it does have enough speed to get out of a situation depending on the playstyle and who you are versing at the time. And it just has a variety of weapons and a loadout allowing to basically take them to the sky and destroy enemy targets and aid whittling down the tickets when there's no action to be had. It does get air brakes, it does get a, dra a drag parachute as well. Uh, max speed is 1199. It is a, an air cooled system, takeoff weight's 12 tons, max altitude of 17,000 meters. Now I've spotted a MiG-17 and a couple of other furball of targets down to my front, so I'm going to try and get in on some of this action. MiG-17 is down. The other MiG-17 that I was looking at is also down. Man, the age of 9.0, 10.0 jets is completely dominated by mainly premiums now. But it's good to be playing this kind of battle running, just a slightly slower pace to uh, a level entry jet. Saber comes in, he misses his shots completely. If he was a smart cook, he would have just deflected just a little more and been able to get me. This thing does get combat flaps, take a flaps, landing flaps. It's an air brake and a drag shoot, as I mentioned before. The wings rip at about 1265, the landing gear at about 447. We're diving in on this Yak 38 here and avoiding that saber altogether. Combat flaps at 620, uh, takeoff at 589. Okay, a few direct sprays in the general direction will lead that Yak 38. He just goes completely into the ground. And here comes a MiG 21. Alright, how are we going to get him as well? Let's hope we can. Big 21's a quite cheeky aircraft. What's well, PFM? So we can get a few spraying shots. Oh, we got lucky there. Ripped off his uh, wing spur. Mm. What a shot, eh? Again, the Davis just allow you to sort of lead your targets. It's maneuverable enough that it doesn't necessarily matter. That Harrier is entering dangerous airspace as his airfield is just coming up there. As much as I want to get the Harrier, I don't necessarily want to die. Because going near airfields in any capacity is a sure death sentence. Hell, even some of the AAA on regular maps. Playing with stuff like, you know, low tier aircraft. You get absolutely dominated by AAA that is sitting in the middle of the map. Now, some of the pros and cons to this vehicle might be interesting for you to hear. It has poor vertical energy retention. Let's just watch that speed drop as I'm going into the vertical right now. Obviously, it doesn't help that I'm spinning my wings over. We lost a good... 400 kilometers in about 10 seconds there now having to build that speed back up so if you're going to take this thing into a vertical make sure you know what you're doing it can't reach Mach 1 and level flight below 6,000 meters and has pretty piss poor acceleration even with the afterburner I mean it's not bad it's not great either now, it does have a very very interesting stock experience from my point of view right now, as this thing isn't fully upgraded, I'm finding this thing to be a treat. It's not like flying a G91, it's not like flying any other type of fighter that War Thunder has to offer. For example, like, Britain really doesn't have much in terms of this early 9.0 kind of thing. Sure, they have the Scimitar or they can use a Hunter, but the Hunter is a bit more of a bit of a bus in this regard. Japan doesn't really have much aside from, you know, the F-86, F-40, which you have to worry about occasionally. Italy's got the G91s. Sweden can be a bit of a problem. You run into J29s and A32s, but that's not necessarily an issue. What is an issue is when you run into uh, Russia's MiG-21s and when you run into America's higher tier stuff, like the F86 and F2s. Now, what I like to do is when there's no real targets or any threats in the area, double check my six, look around the map, scan for how many friendlies I've got left and how many are on the enemy team, and then we go do a little bit of ground pounding. 
Now, the Avon afterburning turbojet engine, which uh, the resulting prototype, uh, became the first French supersonic jet fighter right after conducting its maiden Flight 955. And following this, they basically stole the engine and moved to more refined production. And this is what we get in this one. Super Mystere B2 entered production in 1956, and they made 370 units of this machine. Entering French Air Force in 1957, served French units for a good two decades before, you know, being replaced by newer and more advanced machines. Apart from its own forces, the Super Mystere was also exported and used by six foreign operators, notably Israel, uh, and obviously had used them in the Six Day War. Uh, the Super Mystere was also used in Honduras, uh, where ultimately uh, we used in border skirmishes down there before being ultimately decommissioned in 19. Six. There's something about French aviation that I can't put my finger on. It's like the mystery around uh, Russian aviation. They just look right. They just look like they're meant to fly fast and fly well. It's almost like an Art Deco form of, when you think 1930s, you think of biplane. In hindsight, I know that sounds a bit stupid, but the French really did design quite some wacky aircraft. And I hope to see them in the game in the future, because I really, really do enjoy French aviation going through and spading some aircraft and, and, and retaking a look at some of the things that France has to offer. As I've got all the aircraft in the game, now it was about experiencing things that I ground past or not necessarily really had the time to play because I was playing a premium to unlock most of the aircraft in a tree. But yes, this machine I'm thoroughly enjoying and we're going to go kill this howitzer and then go back to base and we are. Easy. Okay, having taken off, the Act 38 has finally come out of its uh, cave, so has the Harrier. Now, hopefully I'll be able to get at least another kill or two. I'd like to make four kills. The minimum my standard I try and put myself to is about four. Otherwise, you know, the whole entire video is pointless. But looks like that Harrier might be going into the ground. I want to chase him first of all. Yep, there goes the Harrier. And now it's good time to chase the Act 38. Think I can get a pilot's life on him? Let's have a look. All right, aim in. All right. Oh, yep, there you go. Easy. Right, well, that's the Super Mystere, at least in its stock format. I hope you enjoyed today's video. My name is Ash. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.